Today is uh, Thursday, April the 12th, 2018. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 5 in the first seven verses. And here's what it says. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So today we're concentrating on that last beatitude that we just read out of the seventh verse. Blessed are those who are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The, the application of this is so phenomenal to our lives. When we recognize what wretched individuals we have been, how sinful we have been, how we walked in darkness, and how Christ brought us into his glorious light, and we see this great example of how God has been merciful to us. In fact, I think the greatest definition of mercy that we'll ever understand is our receiving the love, the compassion, the forgiveness, and the pardon of God himself for our sins and our grievances, our trespasses against God. The author of the song, uh, Launch Out, wrote these words. He said, the mercy of God is an ocean divine, a boundless and fathomless flood. In Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, and I know you probably know this scripture, but it says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So we've experienced this compassion of God, this mercy of God, this pardon of God, the active goodwill of God, and it has changed our lives. We've responded to that mercy in a positive way. We have so many illustrations of God's mercy toward people, toward Samson, toward David, but I think one of the greatest illustrations is what Jesus told in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Here we have the priest who, who finds this guy wounded and, and laying by the roadside and and he comes by and he looks at him and he's got a meeting at seven o'clock down in Jericho and he's not stopping to take care of this guy. Then you got the Levite, another one of the religious people of the day and he understood the law and all about the law and, and he looks over the scene and he, he's, he's got a scribes meeting tonight. He can't possibly tend to this. Then you have this good Samaritan, the, the kind of people that the religious people of Jesus day, the Jews, considered dogs and Jesus tells this parable and says the Good Samaritan stops and and tends to the wounds and takes them to an innkeeper and says if I owe you more than this when I come back by I'll pay for that till this man has recovered you see blessed are the merciful implies that we take action and mercy has a demand it has a demand that somebody's hurt, somebody's broken, that somebody has had a problem, trial has hit them, and we see their situation and we act toward them with compassion. We don't just have pity or empathy for them. We go ahead and we do something. We participate in their life and we take actions and we take it as much as we have the capability of doing. And so for us... Uh, instead of being hypocritical in our Christianity and, and instead of having reciprocity to people when they, they do wrong to us, we extend mercy to them. See, lots of people need judgment in their life. They need, they've done something wrong and they need justice to take place. But even the people who have, have committed crimes need someone to be merciful toward them. A long time ago, John Wesley was visiting the the colonies and Governor Oglethorpe uh, had caught somebody down in the wine cellar and down in that wine cellar he he had been drinking the wine and Oglethorpe was outraged and he said these words to John Wesley I never forgive 
And John Wesley looked at him and said, I hope, sir, that you never offend. We want mercy when we've been hurt, when, when we have trouble, when we have sickness or disease or trial in our life. But we're more interested in justice for people when they need mercy. You see, I think mercy is always placed in the setting of justice and truth. But I think the three always go together. So we have to know the balance of it. But where is our compassion? Where is our compassion? It says, blessed are the merciful. In other words, those that act toward others with mercy. Blessed are those people. Divine happiness belongs to them. I pray that you're like me today. I'm eager for God to teach me his ways, particularly around this area of mercy. And so we're going to plead with God right now that he fills us with mercy. Lord, I've been a ready recipient of your mercy. And Jesus, uh, while I was still a sinner, you hung on that cross from my sins. And I thank you for the mercy that has been so deeply expressed to me in your love through the cross, through your death and your resurrection. Help me. Help me, O oh Lord, to be merciful to others. Help those who follow you to do the same. And I, I appreciate that you hear our cry today. And, and I, with gratitude, I receive that mercy to be compassionate toward others and in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. I challenge you to extend acts of mercy to people that you come in contact with today. May God bless you as you do so.